divorced, and finally I had to ask him to leave. I have nothing to prove to Dimitri. I told him to get out of my life and stay out. Look at you. All I had to do was mention Dimitri's name. Now, what do you expect? The man told me you were worthless, a liar, that give him half a chance he'd ruin my life. How do you think it makes me feel to hear that coming from somebody I used to look up to? I don't know. How does it make you feel? Apprehensive? A little scared, maybe? Scared? Scared of what? Scared that you're making a mistake. Scared that Dimitri might be right about me. That never even crossed my mind. Kendall, I love you. I don't know what I have to do to convince you. I have always wanted to feel loved. But it just keeps on turning into something else. I feel like I'm suffocating. Because of me? Because of everything. I'm sitting in prison, counting the seconds until I'm free. And the day that I finally do get out of here, you want me to commit to you for the rest of my life. You won't even give me one day to go where I want or do what I want. I thought you wanted to marry me. So I'm either prisoner 7904B, or else I'm Mrs. Anton Lang. Are those my only choices? Is that the price that I have to pay to be loved by you? No, you're not a prisoner, Kendall. And I'm not your jailer. But if that's the way you see it, then there's no hope for us. The first thing we've got to work on is this hair. I have been weighted down by the same drab mop for years, and I'm sick of it. You're right. It's too old for you. Well, it's too old for Annette Punicello and Beach Blanket Bingo. <laughs> you got any ideas? A gammon cut. Everybody is going for it. I don't know if it's just the cut, though. I think I need to do something about the color. I mean, it's so drab and dreary. I know. Let's change the color. We'll give me highlights and extensions. We'll give me a brand new look to go with my brand new... Uh, well, new what? Wardrobe. I treated myself to a spring fashion fling, and I want to make sure I show it off right. Uh -oh. Are you sure you want to go radical? Oh, absolutely. I think the radder the better. Today's going to be a very important day. I only get a chance to make first impressions once. I want to make mine unforgettable. Thank you so much for coming by on such short notice. When Erica Kane calls WRCW with an exclusive, nothing is too much trouble. Oh, thank you. This is Chip and Greg, my crew. Chip? Hello. Nice to meet you, Greg. I know you from WRCW. That's right. How you doing? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Donna, you said something about my going alive? That's right, and it'll be a live feed going out during the new news. Oh, dear, noon. Uh, that's everyone's lunch hour. Do you think anyone is going to see me? Are you kidding? The public appetite for anything Erica Kane has never been bigger. Oh, I hope you're right, <laughs> because I am planning to capitalize on that. Is that what this impromptu press conference is all about? <laughs> Donna, we're getting ready to shoot, so... I see. All right, well, where should I sit here? Right, have a seat here. All right. So be fine. Are my hair and makeup all right? Perfect. Um, I'll do a brief intro, then you take it from there. Fine. In five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. This is Donna Hanover of WRCW reporting live from Linden House, also known as home to Erica Kane. The embattled Miss Kane made headlines recently when the cosmetics company she founded, Enchantment, became the latest statistic in the corporate wars. On a more positive note, a jury found her not guilty of the attempted murder of her estranged husband and business tycoon, Dimitri Merrick. Now here with an exclusive on what the future holds, none other than Erica Kane herself. Thank you, Donna. I don't believe this. It seems as if I've she had controls many the horizontal, she controls the vertical. However, when it's your first love, you never get over it. And that's why I have decided to return to my first love. Yourself? Modeling. The modeling world has You've changed. You've got to be since kidding. Your last foray as a cover girl, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, that's true. And yes, I have never done a swimsuit issue for Sports Pictorial. <laughs> However, I do believe that the American woman can relate to me, that I have a lot to offer the American woman. You were found innocent by reason of temporary insanity. Do you think that might affect your sales appeal? I must tell you that I firmly believe now that the whole story has been told, that the American public understands why I did what I did. And I firmly believe that they can find it in their hearts to forgive me. Right, I hear Criminally Insane Monthly is looking for a new cover girl. 
But I didn't call you here just to talk about me, me, me. Not much. I want very much to go on the record as stating that a percentage of every dollar I earn from modeling will be turned over to the Women's Alliance Rape Crisis Clinic, located in Center City. I firmly believe that the women who have survived the trauma of rape need help, need counseling. I think very much that they should speak about these problems and not sweep them under the rug in a flurry of guilt and shame. I do know that if I had had a telephone number, if I had known of a support group that I could have attended, that certainly the people I love would have been spared a great deal of, of needless pain. Women you who are, are so rape, full of your self. Help, and they need counseling. I certainly intend to do my part, and I certainly hope that you will do yours. I know that your message will be heard. When can we expect to see you on the cover of Trend? Ah, from your lips, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you in the studio, Hal. This is Donna Hanover saying good news and good day. You're really going to go back to modeling? I really am. That is yes. so exciting. Well, I changed that oil like you asked. Oh, good man. And Sarah, you can't always suit. Down on friendly to total strangers? Oh, poo. If she cut a little close to the bone, you gotta give her a break. The poor woman is raw as Erica Tartar, thanks to that ingrate of a daughter of hers. Well, if you believe what you read in the papers, Kendall Hart is some piece of work. Oh, honey, please. Rosemary's baby is alive and well and right where she belongs, behind bars at the Greenbrier Correctional Facility. Well, you've been doing quite a bit of hush-hush on the phone the last couple of days. Anything I should know about? All in good time, my pet. All in good time. Ta-ta. Well, toodaloo to you, too. Problems? Isn't the whole point, the whole idea behind a partnership that it's supposed to be two people working together cheek by jowl. Well, how the heck are we supposed to do that when 50% of us is never around? I mean, Palmer is always off on the hook building his empire. Well, he's doing it for you and Peter, right? Oh, me and Petey. That is a bunch of bull, Tweety. That's just Palmer's party line from back when he was down and out. Now that uh, he's back in the saddle again. Heck, keep me and Petey, we're home alone. Most nuts just eating his dust. Well, if I was married to a good-looking woman like you, I wouldn't leave you home alone. Especially not nights. Well, Dale Henry, I do believe that you are giving me the charm treatment. Oh, just my keen powers of observation, man. Kind of fodder for my first novel. Anyhow, I think maybe you're going about getting your man's attention all wrong. How so? Well, why don't you reach back into that female bag of tricks of yours? Well, you might be onto something there. Has been a donkey's age since I met my lover wearing nothing but the plastic wrap and a smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's time to reheat some of those leftovers and just show Palmer how good home cooking can be. You know, maybe I'm gonna close up this place for an hour or so, just run home and see what's in the fridge there. Well, well, in that case, do you mind if uh, I have a early long lunch? Oh, no, no, you go right on ahead. Take all the time you need. Okay, thanks. Much obliged. Oh, you, me too. You threw Anton out of the house? Yes. I asked him to leave. Wait a minute, am I missing something here? There was, you guys were getting along just great the last time it, I checked. Ed, Edmund, it's, it's complicated. Corvina, you asked me to look after Anton. I did not take that responsibility lightly. Yet Anton is no longer welcome in your home. I, I don't know if Edmund mentioned Erica's daughter, Kendall. She has her sights set on Anton. She's a very disturbed young uh, woman, and I think she's using your brother to get back at me. Do you have a proof of this? Well, suffice it to say, I have my reasons for not trusting Kendall Hart. Now, I warned Anton to steer clear of her, but he's stubborn. He wouldn't listen. Now he's announced his intentions to marry the girl. I'll give Kendall this much. She works fast. Oh, I don't like the sound of this at all. This Kendall, you say she's no good. That 
Corvina would be an understatement. Now, I I'm sorry, I tried to do as you asked. But uh, as I said, Anton's stubborn. He refused to listen to reason at all. Now, I finally had to wash my hands of the, the whole matter completely. Wait, you don't mean that. Yes, I do. Now, I've had it with Anton. If he's bound and determined to ruin his life, let him. He's no longer my concern. I, I don't care if I, if I never see him again. Donna, thank you so much again for this wonderful public forum. Well, I'm your biggest fan. I just hope the American public is as forgiving as you're giving them credit for. Well, I will tell you, I have come up against much worse odds than this and come out stronger than ever. Because I always say that nothing succeeds like success itself, and that's what I do. I succeed where others fail. I admire your determination. <laughs> oh, well, when I set my mind to something, that goal is there and nothing deters me. You know what I think? I think the person who can beat Erica Kane hasn't been born yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I decided to return to my first love, modeling. That's news. Erica Kane breaks a nail, film at 11. Art, you've got a visitor. Who are you? Name's Dale Henry. I'm a writer. Big deal. I understand you're Erica Kane's daughter. So? So how'd you like to help me write a book about your mother? Naturally, I'm concerned about how things worked out with you and Jack, because Jack's my main man. You, well... Thanks. <laughs> you saved Tim's life. The whole Dylan clan wants you to be happy. What's the crime in that? I, there's no crime at all. It's, it's real nice. Thanks. To nada. <laughs> it isn't nothing to me, Trevor, because I thought you were going to hate me forever. That burned out a long time ago. Oh, oh. What? Before I forget. I brought you a check. Oh, you don't have to worry about paying me back. Yes, I do, because a deal's a deal. And I said I was going to pay back all the money that you put out to cover my debts, and I will. Thanks. Not a day goes by I don't think about Natalie. I'd say thanks again for everything she did for me. Well, Natalie had good instincts. She had a, an eye for quality goods. And you, lady, your quality goods. <laughs> Thanks again for taking care of the kids. Oh, sure. Bye. I'd like to see my brother and talk to him about this candle. You can probably find him in the visiting room of the Greenbrier Correctional Facility. Edmund, would you please take me there, now? There's something that has to be cleared up first. Please don't. I'm sorry. Please don't do this, I beg you. Then you do it. Tell Dimitri. Or I'm gonna have to. Tell me what? Stay tuned for One Life to Live, coming up next here on ABC.